and you have a friend who you think um, they have a pet and you think that they would love to use oils as well, you can totally share this video with them since we're recording it. Um, if you don't know already, if you weren't here when we first started talking about this, my name's Hannah. I'm going to be teaching tonight along with. So I'm Joyce. Joyce. Be a little more hype, Joyce. Um, and we are going to be talking about pets and oils. Um, so it sounds like everybody has like dogs and cats. So we're going to really focus on those. I mean, I feel like those are the normal kinds of pets. But just so you know, if you have horses, if you have chickens, if you have reptiles, there are so many oils that can benefit them as well. We're just not going to go down that because that's not really what we're talking about tonight. So anyway, we already kind of talked about what kind of pets everybody has and what their names are. Raise your hand if you've never used oils on your pet before. Okay, we got a couple. So raise your hand if you're nervous to use oils on your pet. Maybe you've seen, maybe you've seen some articles. Every couple of years they kind of circulate. Somebody's cat or they're usually cat type videos. Um, but anyway, so we're gonna we're gonna help you not be so afraid or nervous about that um, and kind of talk about some of the reasons, you know, why maybe those those things circulate and what you can do with your oils. So um, raise your hand though if your pet could use support in any of these following ways. Skin, for skin, they have allergies, maybe they are rough and tumble like mine are. Um, allergies, um, digestive, whatever, um, and mood. Whether that's, you know, they're aggressive or they're afraid of thunderstorms or fireworks or whatever. Okay, so we're going to kind of touch on all of those different things because those are literally all the ways that I use oils to support my animals. Um, so we're going to talk about those. But first and foremost, um, we're going to be talking a lot about like our personal experience, how we use oils for our pets. And I just want everybody to remember like I'm not a veterinarian. So don't, you know, don't say, well, Hannah told me to do this. I'm telling you it works for my pets because my pets are different than your pets. And so everything we're gonna be teaching today is use with caution, observe, make sure you like pay attention to them and know what works for them. Um, so once again, I'm not a vet. Anyway, so Joyce is gonna take us away with why quality absolutely matters when it comes to using oils for your pets. Hey everybody, so I have no pets, but my um, children are Nicole, my daughter-in-law is Lindsay. They have enough pets, so I don't need to have any because. They have a zoo, cats, dogs, turtles. They may have fish. I really don't know. But, you know, quality is, is really important. Um, if you're going to use oils on your pet, you want to be careful. You don't want to hurt them. Um, you want to make sure that the essential oils are pure. You don't want them to have any kind of synthetic ingredients in them because the animals, they can't filter out the synthetic ingredients. And what's really impressive about Young Living is their seal, seed to seal. Um, promise and that's their plant materials it's grown in corporately owned farms they're carefully vetted partner farms and you can actually go visit and Hannah can tell you about that because she has actually gone and visited one of their farms and she loved it um, their sustainable farming in their um, sustainable farming and sourcing practices they provide the purest oils um, they take great care to preserve and protect the natural resources because you want them to do a good job with how they're raising the plants. You don't want them to destroy the land in the process of trying to make something for your pet. So if they're going to take good care of the land, they're going to grow um, the, the plants and do the oils and do the best they can for you. The fields are actually hand weeded. There's zero use of pesticides. So you don't have to worry about that getting into the oils. Um, the oils. Um, they retain all their natural constituents and their therapeutic properties. Uh, they use a food grade dispenser, which they aren't designed in distillation methods. They use low pressure, low temperature distillation without the use of solvents or again, without synthetic chemicals, because you don't want all that fake stuff in anything that you would put on your body, nor do you want to put it on your animal or your pet, you know, whatever kind of pet you have. Um, 
they do rigorous testing on each batch by internal labs and third party facilities. So it's not just their word. They're actually getting, you know, other people to test their oils to verify. And I was reading on up earlier, you know, they go through so much testing before they ever will actually bottle it to sell it to. And again, they're carefully reviewed through every step of the production. They want to meet and exceed the industry standards and the purity standards. You know, they want to go beyond just being organic. Because, you know, you don't, if you wouldn't put it on your body, you don't want to put it on your animal's body. You, you want to protect your animals. You want to give them the best you can. Because for some people, animals are their children. So, you know, again, this, the seed to seal promise, you couldn't ask for, uh, you know, a better way to get your oils. So now Hannah's going to talk about some basic rules of thumb. And these kind of just piggyback off of what she was just saying about the quality is if you start digging into these, if you've seen the posts about cats or dogs using essential oils on them, and you really critically look at it, it comes down to poor quality oils being used on them and poorly used on them. So even a good essential oil, like even a Young Living oil, the way that animals metabolize things, so like filter things out of their body, is a very different than for us. You got to think they can't have chocolate, right? They can't have grapes. There are certain things that their bodies, because of like the chemicals or the constituents or whatever that are in those things, their bodies can't filter that out. And so it ends up being toxic to their bodies and breaking down organs and things like that. So essential oils are really awesome and they can have a lot of different benefits for your pet's bodies, but the biggest thing is making sure you're using, like she said, the purest that you can because the synthetic stuff is even worse for them, but also a couple of, 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 of other things. Sorry, y'all. Um, so second most important thing is letting your animal choose because animals actually instinctively um, will be like, oh, I like that smell or oh, I do not like that smell. So I actually meant to grab a bottle of oil so that I could even show this off. Actually, I think I have one in here. Sorry, y'all, I'm ill-prepared. Um, so we can kind of talk about what it looks like when you're first introducing your pets to oils. Um, and this is more so like when you are using them like on them topically. So when you're diffusing oils, we'll talk about that in just a minute. But so if you're letting your pet choose the oil, you don't even have to open the bottle and they're gonna be able to smell it. So let them smell the bottle, let them you know sniff around at it. And if they don't act like, oh, I don't like that, then that's where you can move forward. But it's something that you want to be just really slow about because you also have to think when you're cooking something or when I open up a bag of chips and my dog is on the other side of the house, my dog comes running because it smells and here's the chips. Mm -hmm. So like dogs just have, and, and, and cats, have really good senses of smell. So if you've ever walked into a room where somebody maybe like just sprayed like cologne all over themselves or something and you get that wall of smell and it hits you and it's like, whoa, that's how essential oils can be for dogs because their sense of smell and cats is just so much better than ours. So we really have to be cautious with them um, and letting them choose. So first, just introduce it, um, just the bottle. Then what I do is all essential oil bottles have the little reducer cap. I don't even like put a drop in my hand. I just put my thumb on it like this so that I have just a little bit of oil and I just hold my hand like this for them to smell. Um, and then once that, then I go into, okay, now I can put that oil on my pet. Um, another thing when it comes to introducing oils is you never want to introduce oils when the animal is like a new oil, when they're under stress, um, because that's going to be like a trigger for them. And also it's something new and very unfamiliar. So that can just like make it worse, not make it better. Even if it's an oil, like lavender that's great for stress if you're the first time you're introducing that is when they're stressed out like they're gonna it's gonna be an overload of their senses um so the next thing is to give them an out um this more so applies to like if you're diffusing oils so first thing when you first diffuse oils around um dogs which i have been diffusing um oils around my cats and my dogs like the entire time i've had them i have never had issues with a single essential oil that i have used um, but I don't put 20 drops of essential oil. Once again, Young Living's oils are pure, they're amazing, they're super potent, so you don't need that many anyway, um, but I even erred on the side of caution and did even less than I would personally do just for myself, 
just to get them used to it. Um, and when I mean, what I mean by saying um, give them an out is make sure that if you're doing it in a big room where they're not confined right next to the diffuser, make sure that they have a way that they can get out of the room if they need to and watch their behavior, see how they act. Because if they're like leaving the room, maybe that's not something that they like. Um, so make sure you give them an out. And some of the things to look for when you're using oils, whether you're diffusing them or you're putting them on their skin, which we'll talk about dilution in just a second. A second. Um, but when you are using oils on them and you're making sure, okay, how are they reacting to this oil? A couple things you wanna look for is excessive yawning, scratching, backing away, lip licking, lifting a paw, aggressive, or not aggressive, as excessive sleeping, um, excessive water consumption, um, urination, like excessive urination or aggression. Um, so if any of those kinds of signs, um, you wanna make sure that, you know, the thing that you're gonna do is you're gonna dilute if you have the oils on them or you're going to stop your diffuser. Um, so when it comes to dilution, if you're not familiar with that term, dilution just that you're gonna take an essential oil and you're going to, um, yes, Lindsay, I actually have a story I'm about to share about that. Um, so uh, diluting just means that you're gonna take an essential oil and you're gonna mix carrier oil with it. Um, and that just means that it's not, it's not gonna be quite as potent. And with animals, the reason why that is super important is because they have a lot of hair follicles. And so, I mean, they have hair all over their bodies, right? So they have an increased rate of absorption. Their body absorbs oils a lot faster than our bodies do. And so if I were to put the same amount of an oil on me as I put on them, they're gonna absorb a lot of it. And once again, essential oils are not bad for animals, but when we, when we use them improperly, those kinds of articles where they're talking about how oils are toxic to animals, if because somebody dumped a whole bottle or they diffused a whole bottle of an oil around this animal, and that's what was not a good thing. So when we dilute our oils properly, that's gonna do, that's gonna be what we need to do. So if you put oils on your pet and they're doing any of those things that I said, then what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna want to add some carrier oil, not water, because water's not gonna, water and oil don't mix, um, add some carrier oil and dilute, dilute it down and just watch their behavior further. Um, and like Lindsay was saying about um, don't use it, like don't put oils on, put them under a blanket because it intensifies the oils. So I have like a, oh my gosh, I'm a terrible pet parent um, moment with my dog, Louise. She was my first dog. Um, I started using oils with her and she had like this weird little skin thing. Um, I don't quite remember what that was because I was traumatized by just everything else. I don't really remember, but we put tea tree oil on it. Tea tree oil is a great oil. Lots of people use it for their pets, but the point that I did that was bad was I did not dilute it a whole lot and I wrapped it up. So by wrapping it up, um, that like intensified the oil and how it was absorbed in her body. And um, I looked up like 20 minutes after I did it and Louise is like slumped over in the corner. Like she looked like she was drunk. <laughs> And I was like, oh my gosh, my dog. And so I unwrapped it and I put more carrier oil on it. And in like 20 minutes, she was fine. So you might make some mistakes, but if you follow the guidelines of diluting your oils, if you make sure you're starting with less, always erring on the side of caution, you can always bump up to using more. Um, like you really can't go wrong. Just don't do what I did, okay? So how should you properly dilute? This honestly, like I was saying, every animal is different. Just like my dog might like, or my cat might like certain oils that yours doesn't. Um, but typically what you're gonna do, with cats, you're gonna dilute a lot more because their bodies are even more sensitive than dogs. Um, you're gonna do like one drop of oil to eight drops of carrier oil. Um, with dogs that are like under 25 pounds, you're gonna do five drops of carrier oil to one drop of essential oil. Um, bigger dogs, you can do a little bit less. Um, and another thing is to use additional caution if you have an animal that's older or if you have an animal that has kidney or liver like issues. Because once again, if, if they're older or they have these types of issues, their body's not gonna be able to process that out as much. So last thing is um, oils that 
should be avoided. So first of all, I don't believe that any oils are bad for dogs. Um, we're gonna talk about resources at the end, but I don't think that there are any oils that you cannot use on dogs or cats or whatever. Um, I think that there are oils that should be seldomly used. And I think that there are oils that um, need to be like really, really diluted. Um, but there is still a list of oils that are gonna be used with caution kind of oils. And that's gonna be basil, anise, clove, oregano, thyme, cinnamon, cassia. Those are all high in the chemical constituent that's called phenols. Um, so you just wanna use caution. Um, another thing is with cats, um, oils that are they're going to be more sensitive to is going to be tea tree and citrus oils. So once again, I personally don't avoid using those oils with my pets. Um, I just use them with caution. I watch them and make sure that they're okay. Um, so now that we've kind of gone, gone over some of the basics, um, Joyce is going to talk about what oils do we use? Why do we use them? Okay, so let, we're going to start off with um, lavender, which is, you know, you can use it for everything. We call it the Swiss Army knife. It's you know good for everything that ails you. Um, you can use it for sleep. It's you know got antiseptic properties. It's just one of those that no matter what issue you have, you could probably use lavender. Um, another thing you can do um, an oil you can use is purification, like in your litter box. Add some baking soda, a couple drops of purification. It helps kill the odors because nobody wants to walk in your house and smell a stinky litter box. Um, moods. You know, you get stressed out, you're in a bad mood, your pets feel it. Well, if you're going to use oils on you, you might as well use these on your pet. Stress away, valor, peace and calming, dental baby. If it can help calm you down, you diffuse it, it's going to help with your pet. Um, some others that you could use are copaiba and lemongrass for joint and muscle pain. And I guess the, these are oils that you can use on yourself as well as your pet. Um, and then they also have um, an animal sense line. <clears throat> so if you're not sure about the other oils, you know, always use the ones in the animal sense line, just because you know that they're gonna be safe for animals or made specifically for animals. The next three that I'm gonna mention are intended to be used as a set. Lindsay was just holding up um, one of the products. Um, like I said, the next three are intended to be used as a set, and the first one's Infect Away. It's for uh, minor skin irritations, it guards against harmful contaminants. The next one would be Pure Clean. It helps with dry, flaky skin. The third one would be Mend Well. It soothes and moisturizes dry, sensitive, and distressed skin. Some other ones are Tea, tea Away, which is it's calming, um, can help with sleep. You know, you just spray it on their bedding just a little bit. Um, Paragize. We have Diagize for our tummy support. You obviously want to have an oil for your pet tummy. So Paragize is good for tummy support. Um, animal Sense Ointment. Um, it's for soothing and deeply hydrating animal skin. It's great on scratches and scrapes, you know, any kind of boo-boos that your little fur, fur baby or your tortoise or whatever. <laughs> might <be>. um, <laughs> and well, you know, I have a uh, grand tortoise. Um, yeah. Animal scent shampoo. Um, there's no junky ingredients. It's essential oils that are great for skin and keeping the bugs away. So that would help, you know, that way you don't have to kind of put any kind of like, bug repellent, you know, when you put your animals outside, you can wash them with the shampoo. And then they also make dental chews and cat treats. Um, again, there's no junky, yucky ingredients in them. It has uh, the essential oils in it that will help for their digestive support. So it's, I mean, like I said, I don't have um, any pets, but I would definitely use these on my grand dogs and grand cats and foster grand cats and my grand tortoise. So um, some other things, you know, for ticks, um, you can do a DIY tick collar in white. So I know Lindsay Smith's gonna love this. Um, so to make the DIY collar for dogs, it would be one cup of water, two capfuls of the thieves cleaner, <clears throat> 10 drops of lavender, 10 drops of citronella, 10 drops of cedar wood, 10 drops of kunzia. You mix all that in a bowl, you put the pet's collar in there, let it soak for about five minutes, remove it, let it dry, and then put it on your pet. And you know, that's gonna help 
you know, keep the ticks away. And then wipes, you know, your pet does get kind of dirty. You may not be able to bathe them every day, nor do you want to bathe them every day. So you could use these wipes to clean them up, clean their little paws off, whatever. Um, you cut a roll of paper towels in half and you remove the cardboard center. You put inside, you, uh, you put inside a container with a lid. For the liquid, um, you just soak the collar in over the towels and make sure it gets fully covered and you can wipe them down with that. Again, it's gonna help with, uh, you know, keep the fleas and everything off. Plus it's gonna keep them clean. Plus, cause it's got the essential oils in it, it's gonna smell good. It's not gonna smell like any kind of the chemical stuff you could buy, um, you know, at the store or whatever. And it's gonna be safe for your pet. So now Hannah's gonna give you some resources on how to use and where to get these. Yeah, so one of my first things I want to talk about before I talk about the resources is this concept of ditching and switching. So the the tick collar and the wipes is actually recipes that I personally use on my pets. Um, I My cats, when I first got them, I wasn't into oils for the whole first year of their life, so I had them on, you know, whatever, flea and tick medicine. My dogs, when I first got them and they were fostered, they were on that, but I immediately switched them over. And I, this is all I use on my pets. Um, and the biggest reason is because I learned that um, those canine advantages, all that stuff, there are links to skin irritations, um, which both of my dogs have very sensitive skin. Um, and there's links to kidney issues um, later in life. What'd you say? And heart disease as this person has said. So there's just lots of issues that are linked to those things. And so if I can replace them with something that is better for them, um, that not only doesn't have the junk that hurts them, but also is beneficial to their bodies, um, like I'm gonna do that. So I switched to this, we don't have any issues with bugs. Um, other things we've switched to, I mean, diffusing oils in our home is way better for them than having candles or plug-ins or the her breeze sprays and all those things that, you know, we were spraying to cover up the fact that we have a zoo. Um, all these things that we use, you know, the putting oils in the litter box, way better for them than the scented fragrance that was in the litter that we were using. Um, same for like the shampoo, just there's certain things that you start to think of that Maybe you're not really interested in going non-toxic for you, um, but for your fur babies, maybe you're willing to start doing those things. And it's gonna be, I mean, it's gonna be beneficial for you as well. So just start thinking through the things that you bring into your house because they're not only affecting you, but they're affecting them. Cause like we said, the synthetic stuff, it's really harmful and damaging to our bodies and even more so to them. Um, and it's really sad because like um, canine and feline cancer is higher than it has ever been. Um, I mean, I feel like that's the same for humans as well, but it is really, really high. Um, and I used to work for a pet sitting service. And um, the last year that I worked there, within that year, five of the dogs that I watched all had cancer. Um, and I started looking at what the common denominator was and three of the five of them where their dog kept, where they kept their dog crate was in the laundry room where all their fragrancy stuff was. And that to me was just like an eye opener that like, I want to let people know this stuff that like what they're using around their pets matters. And like, we love our pets, like they're our own kids. So we should care about this stuff. So anyway, resources for you. Um, the animal desk reference is an amazing resource. Um, it's a, big old book. Um, it's got all different kinds of ways that you can use animals for dogs and cats, but also like I was saying at the beginning, if you have chickens, if you want to get chickens, if you have rabbits, whatever kind of animal you have, it has all kinds of animals listed. Um, another great resource is the Lavender Life blog. That's Young Living's blog, and they have several posts. If you go in there and you search, um, they have several really good um, animal posts for how to use oils. The next one is um, Actually, there is a Facebook group, which I love because people are constantly posting their own, I'm putting the link in the chat, they're posting their own testimonials and you can ask questions there in there. And once again, nobody's telling you, oh, do this thing. They're saying, well, this worked for me. So that you can kind of, you're getting empowered to use oils for your pets and learning what works for them. Um, and then the last two resources, um, Lindsay Elmore, she is a pharmacist. She's amazing. She does a lot of research for essential oils and she has several posts 
about um, essential oils for pets, but the one that I just put in the chat is my favorite because it will kind of tell you the why behind um, we need to be safe with oils and why, you know, oils act a certain way for pets and stuff like that. So it's a really good one. Um, so yeah, that's all we have for y'all. Um, does anybody have any questions? Um, we can open it up, we'll stare at y'all. So you- uh, um, Something I was gonna mention too is like, anybody have pets that you're, you're just like not looking forward to Saturday being July 4th. Like you're just like, okay. That's a really good point. <laughs> Four pets, the socks, you know, whatever. Yes. Okay. So um, I have a dog that basically I have like, not really, but I joke that I have joint custody of um, this dog because I have known her since she was like 12 years old. Um, but I actually ironically almost always have her on July 4th. This is the first year I have it in, in her like five years of life. Um, and I always will get her a few days early and I will like slowly kind of diffuse and rub on myself the oils that I'm going to spray on her the night of July 4th. Um, and when she was a puppy, she was only a few months old, um, you know, definitely like could be held. She's a golden retriever, so she cannot be held anymore. But um, I went to a fireworks show with her on a leash and she fell asleep in my lap. So like that was her reaction to the oils, but I had been using them for like almost a week beforehand, just kind of getting her used to it. So if anybody has pets, I would definitely recommend some of the like stress away and peace and calming and lavender ones like diluted in maybe a spray bottle, spraying it on the back of the neck, starting like tonight. And then like throughout the week, just kind of consistently doing that with your pets. So that Saturday they're used to it and they respond well to it. Yeah, because ours, he freaks out um, with fireworks now. And usually we have to do like CBD in order yeah, to get them yeah. to chill. Yeah, um, so I would even like if, if you have thunderstorm, you know, scared pets, like this is a great one. But I just really saw like if I had waited until Saturday, she wouldn't have settled because she was not used to the oils. She doesn't live with me, so she's not used to them in general. So like kind of getting her used to it ahead of time made July 4th itself awesome because her body was like, yep, we know what to do now, and just, like, fell asleep, and literally, like, slept through the entire fireworks show, so, um, yeah, and I would just recommend maybe starting tonight. Lavender? What oils were those again? I, specific, I specifically use Stress Away Lavender and Peace and Calming in, like, a spray bottle, so I'll do, like, a few drops in a spray bottle with water, shake it up, and I spray it on the back of the neck. Um, I don't really like the idea of, like, well, I just don't want the dog licking you know it off or whatever it's really not going to mess their system up to lick it i'm not scared of that i don't want them getting rid of it <laughs> from their skin like i want it sitting where it's supposed to sit so it's kind of like if if you were sitting there going um i'm really hot right now i'm just going to rub some peppermint on the back of my neck like that's kind of the same thing so um spray bottle spray it on there maybe spray it on your hands and just like give them a good like massage rub with that and then you're good to go okay yeah, and my dog Zeus is literally the biggest scaredy cat. He's a brindle pit bull. So, you know, people think, oh, that's a scary. He is the biggest baby and he's afraid of thunderstorms. He is scared. He's scared of all loud noises outside, fireworks. This dog loves some valor. If I have a bottle of valor and I'm opening it up because I use that oil every day, that's like my anxiety oil. If I open it up, he comes and he sits down at my feet because he wants me to put it on. So like that's the cool thing about using oils for pets is like I said, let them choose. Like they're gonna find all of my pets have a favorite essential oil that they love to have put on them. Um, so it's just it's it's fun. It's cool to see them choose those things um, and see how it helps them out. Does anybody else have any questions or anything that stuck stuck out to them? I have another one. Um, as far as like Joey said, the copaiba and the lemongrass and stuff helps for like joints and pain. Is that like a mix with a little bit of coconut oil, put it on their food kind of thing? Or is that like a directly apply it to, you know, those areas kind of like the, like a muscle rub or something? Uh, Sophie said yes. <laughs> so the answer is either. Okay. Like either one. Like if you, do you get your dog or like your pets, whatever, like sometimes you can make bacon and you can like pour bacon base over their food. Have you ever done that? I mean, honestly, sometimes you can even just, like, drop the oils into that and then pour it over the food. Like, you're fine. But if you want, like, if they're really achy, you can, once again, kind of like the fireworks stuff, put it on your hands and just give them a good rub. Okay. But definitely mix it with some coconut oil, for sure. 
Yeah, because she I has the oh, coconut sorry. or MCT. No, you're fine. I was just going to say we have the coconut and then what's the other one? MCT oil because yeah. she has seizures anyway. So yeah. that's supposed to yeah. kind of help with, with her brain neurons anyway. So that's good, easy. yeah. Well, and one thing too that you could consider, Young Living has B6 oil. And the six is like there's six different pump or another's put together, whatever. Um, I'm, not, I'm real good at details. Um, but that one I really like because it's a good fatty one and it doesn't like it's really good for sensitive skin. Um, like coconut oil typically is awesome for sensitive skin, but because of like the taste and stuff like that, there might be like you know, whatever's and, and you just so if your dog is you know reacting that way, I just I really always recommend the V6 oil for things like this just because it's so um chill you know for for anybody whether it's a person or a pet um but it really doesn't matter if they respond well to coconut oil go for it who cares you know is there any particular like we've talked kind of with lindsay and nicole now particular issues i can't really think of another way to say that issues um that your pet deals with that you're like man i wish there was an oil for that or i know at the beginning we kind of asked some different things but I've got hot how about spots. A, how, oh, go no, go, mom. Go. I was going to say, what about aggressive dogs? Like aggressive to other dogs? Are there things that can help them calm down when they're out and about and there's other, you know, dogs and stuff around? Like one of the what? Um, okay, so have you ever heard of like those t-shirts? I mean, you can literally just use a regular t-shirt, but like a t-shirt for like if they're afraid of thunderstorms. Have you ever heard of that kind of mind that that thunder sort of shirt, thing? thunder mm -hmm. shirt, whatever? Have you heard of those? D say that again. Have those thunder of? jackets. Uh, I've never tried one. No. Okay, so I have actually had some friends who had um, dogs that like they were overly playful but it was it, it was too much it was too aggressive you know so it was coming from like a nice place but it was just too much they actually would like have a t-shirt the dog would normally wear during like a thunderstorm if they were like real anxious you know um, and they would spray that down with like chill the heck out oils you know so you're stressed away your lavender your piece of calming and then they would go like maybe to the park and oh. so it, it would get dirty so you, you need to like wash it kind of consistently that's like annoying but like i've heard of that being a really helpful option and that's another one that when you're like really talking calmly and it's like nighttime and you use that, well, when that dog is wearing it another time, like it, that smell should trigger that same like chill out, you know, vibe. But another uh -huh. option, like it, pets, like some pets don't really like minty oils. And if they're busy behaving, put like a little bit of minty, like, you know, peppermint in a water spray bottle. And it's kind of like, that's like spray them in the face. Like, no, like that's not okay. You know, so if you have to end up going the other route, like that's an option too. Oh, cool. You got a couple of different, uh, different things. That you sounds like, it sounds like your best bet mom would be to make one of those little sprays and just spray both of their beds at night, like before they're going to bed so that they kind of are more chill when they wake up. No, yeah. No, don't put Toby in a t-shirt. Put Toby in a t-shirt. <laughs> put Toby in a t-shirt? He's yeah. talking about Tommy, probably not Toby. Wait, you th Tommy's the aggressive one towards other dogs. Yeah, really. Tommy's a jerk puppy. No, he's not. Yeah, he is. He's a Tasmanian <laughs> devil when it comes to other dogs. <laughs> oh, he just poops a lot. You're welcome. Your daughter gets you a puppy, and look what happens. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, daughter. Yeah. Well, <laughs> your problem now, not mine. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I wanted to add in to, um, I know my mom, Susan, uh, on this call, she has uh, three dogs and I um, used to live with her, obviously. And um, uh, we had one dog that pees everywhere. Like it's a behavior thing. It's not because he doesn't need that. Like he, it's a behavior. So getting that smell out was like the struggle of our lives <laughs> and it's like still a constant struggle but um I think I used oh it was my smell good spray so I use this a blend of purification and citrus fresh um oils and then half witch hazel half water in that spray and I would just go around and spray the spots that we cleaned because of course it's always the couch that you can't throw in the washer <laughs> and like you can't get rid of that smell easily so 
uh, after yeah. cleaning it with uh, Thieves Cleaner, and then I would spray it. And um, I will admit, I have to spray it frequently. Like it doesn't, I don't know, it didn't go away, go away, but having that, uh, that spray that, um, that I can spray that's not toxic and that um, does get rid of the odor, um, that was a lifesaver. And I use that around my house too. <laughs> Yeah, that's awesome. Well, and also, like, if you're killing the smell, they, it, they'll go back to the same spot again. So if you don't get rid of the smell, then you're going to have them going home. So that's smart. Yeah, especially, like, cat, cats can be bad about that, too, because they can find those really small little corners of your closet, you know. Mm -hmm. Cats. Awesome. Does anybody else have any questions or anything to add? I feel like I'm I'm ex exhausting our quota for questions here. <laughs> We're monopolizing. I know, meeting. right? Um, what do you guys suggest for like irritations, like hot spots, or like Ty tends to if she's out in the yard if she gets bit? Yeah, what is that? Animal um, sense ointment. Yeah, okay. the animal sense ointment. I literally use this on myself. <laughs> it's Does amazing. It have any pets? I don't have pets right now. One day we will be getting a puppy, but it's like a really thick, like you like have to scrape it with your finger. It's like pretty thick. Um, it is so good for my skin. Like in the winter when your hand gets really peely and cracky, like it knocks it out on me. So I absolutely love this stuff. Um, and I'm putting it on my hand right now. <laughs> um, but yeah, this stuff is so good and it's going to last forever. I've had this for like, almost almost two years probably yeah, and I've only used like I still have that much of it so I love that um there's so many uses for this but yeah definitely for pet skin Super yeah good. my so my friends have a golden retriever my parents have a pool and it's like uh like a it's not a lined pool so it's like just the cement you know and we have stairs going out but this like dog was like disconnected to the knowledge that there were steps you know so she would like or he would always go to the side and kind of panickingly like climb out and stuff well his pads like kept scraping against you know the side and when that happens for like an hour or two his pads like kind of started to bleed a little bit so um what we did was we put the ointment on it and they took him home and he didn't really want to walk around too much well the next day he was fine like literally there was no like tenderness and stuff um, and they just kept an eye on it, made sure that like he wasn't in areas that it would break the skin again. But within like a couple of days, they didn't even have to worry about it anymore. So it just does a really good job of like speeding up what the body already is capable of doing as far as the healing goes, um, but just making it go a little bit faster. It's also great for dandruff. And I guess it's okay. It just gets dandruff. What were we going to say to Susan? Is it, I guess it's okay if they lick it as well. Yes. Yeah. So they lick the ointment. Yeah. So anything that like um, that Young Living has that you can use, like in the Animal Sense line, it's one of those like you know with with um, stuff with babies or whatever. Whatever you put on them, you're kind of assuming they're gonna like fit in them. Like they're if you put it on the bottom of their foot, they're gonna put their foot in the mouth. Yeah. And um, but yeah, this is incredibly sensitive for the skin and for the belly. Um, and so you don't really have to worry about that. But also it's a lotion, so it does rub in. So like, yeah, there might be a little bit left behind in the fur, you know, because if, if it's like a broken part, like a little bit above like the pad or something, there might be a little bit like residue and stuff, but it's perfectly safe. Good. That's so, what I was talking about, Becky, for, um, for Ralph. Did Becky hear me? <laughs> yeah. Ralph. Go, Ralph. Ralph. I love it. Her, her new baby. So well, thank y'all so much for coming um, here tonight, coming here. Um, if y'all have any questions, definitely reach out to us. Um, and if you, if you are interested in using oils for your pets, I definitely recommend being in that Facebook group that I put a link to, because that's super helpful to me, especially when I was first starting out and I was just not aware, oh, how should I use oils or what, what oils do I use this for? It's just a great resource to have. Um, and you can go in there and you can search different issues. So hotspots, y'all can go in there and look. And I think animal sense would be a great thing to start with, but maybe somebody has a testimony of like 
a specific oil that they added to that as well to help with that, um, stuff like that. So anyway, thank you all so much for coming. Have a great night. Thank you. Nice to meet you all. Thank you. Bye guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.